Hello YouTubers, welcome to P. Dina, Royally Teachable Moments. And I'm happy to be here with you today. Happy to see you. I hope you're doing well. And yeah, yeah, we're just, we're just doing what we do, doing what we do. What I'm talking about today, I'm gonna to throw in some things that I've talked about before to kind of go in with this story because what we have happening right now with Harry and Meghan, more so Meghan, unprecedented. Like we are watching serious history in the making at an unprecedented level. I don't know if a lot of you understand how groundbreaking all of this is because you know, what is the end game at this point? Like what is the end game? And, you know, I don't want to be somebody who is saying things that are not good just to say it. But I really, truly, in my heart, have concerns because this is like no other. And what I mean by all of this is, you know, we've got this couple on this world stage who are making all of these headlines. And at the end of the day, you are looking at a couple with children and people in their real life. Like this is people's humans <laughs> that we're talking about, okay? And you peel back all of the stories and just the superficial things and you get to the core of it and you've got real tragedy and trauma because this is just off the charts. I'm thinking about what has happened with this trial with Samantha and how her attorney has called Megan a sociopath. And I think that is what we're dealing with. Now, of course, I can't diagnose her, neither can this lawyer, but you look at the behavior and the way this woman is, and you have to say something is wrong. And we're watching it play out. No doubt, we're watching it play out. So let's just look at what the definition of a sociopath is, okay? Sociopath. A person with personality disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behavior and a lack of conscience. I wouldn't say that Megan is an anti-social, but I would say she has a lack of conscience. Because I know certain things would just bother me. They would bother me to the heel if I had this drama going on between two families, my family and my husband's family that I created. Like my conscience would bother me. She does not seem to be phased by it all. That's what I find so fascinating. This is just like I look at this and I think, how could you be so cruel and calculating? Samantha Markle's lawyer has said that Megan, she ran a calculated psyop to land a prince and that she is most probably a sociopath. And of course, you know, these comments are going to offend those within the Sussex camp is this is an article written by Jack Royston. Of course, of course, they'll be upset. I mean, yeah, people call you a psychopath. You're gonna be like, what? I ain't psycho. <laughs> While showing people that you psycho, but <laughs> something's going on. <laughs> if she ain't a psychopath, she's something. <laughs> and it ain't good because you don't go off acting this way on a world stage, doing these things to families and something not be there. So when the libel case was first launched, her lawyer, Michael Kump, said in a statement, this baseless and absurd lawsuit is just the continuation of a pattern of disturbing behavior. We will give it the minimum attention necessary, which it deserves. And this is what he's saying about Samantha, you know, the lawyer for Megan. You know, go ahead, give it the minimal attention that you think it deserves. But it, it definitely deserves people looking at it because something is wrong with a woman that says she doesn't have any sisters. She doesn't have any siblings. When clearly that is a big fat lie. Like this woman wants to believe that she grew up isolated. Isolated from her half siblings. And I'm going to show you 
I'm going to point out two very distinctive lies, folks. Two lies that are so in your face lies that anybody that thinks this woman has grown up an only child, you are so mistaken by the lies of this woman. So Samantha has accused Megan of defamation over comments that she made on the Oprah show. We remember this in 2021 and things that she had said in the Netflix documentary that came out in December of 2022, suggesting that they had no real relationship growing up. No, no real relationship. See, this is the thing. I like how she's, she wants to use real relationship. You know, it wasn't that we didn't have no relationship. The word real is used. Well, what is real? Because we clearly see nothing in your head seems to be real. So when you say you had no real relationship, we have to look at that very loosely. Because everything that she has drawn up in her head is a big fat fantasy. <laughs> okay. So if you're dealing with somebody who is a sociopath and they say we haven't had a real relationship. Well, you got to look at that as like, well, yeah, but the way you have done things in your life, as we have seen by X examples, you seeing you had no real relationship doesn't really mean anything because you don't know how to be even real. So how can you say you had no real relationship when your whole reality of what your life is, is mistaken? And that's how you can see and tell that any description that Megan puts on her relationship with her half siblings is a fabricated lie because all the things within her life around this being in a royal family and having this man as a prince is fantasy. So of course she's going to label these fantasies from her childhood because that in itself is a fantasy when she says no real relationship. She mentioned in her docu-series that with her mother Doria that during the week she was with her mother Doria and on the weekends she would spend with her father. Now I'm going to just break down how that cannot be true. You know how it cannot be true? Because Megan was on the set of Mary with children during the week with her father. Was she not? Yes. With her father. Because her father would be responsible of watching Megan after school on the studio lot. After school. She wasn't with her mother during the week. She was with her father. Evidence. The people at Married with Children would be with her. She would be in the offices of the producers. She was she even talked about it, how she was always on the set of Married with Children. She said in her own words, she grew up on the set of Married with Children. You know, by the way, she grew up on the set of Married with Children. Did you know that? Why? Her father was a was a. Um Camera operator. Oh, really? And she used to come on the set in a little Catholic school uniform. If she's saying that she's on the set of Married with Children after school all the time, she grew up on that set. How could it be that she was living with her mother then during the week? If she herself says she was on the set all the time, she loved being there. Okay. It wasn't that Doria would pick her up and bring her to the set. No, she was there out of convenience for Thomas Markle because he would have to work late hours. And if she is living with her father, then she is on the set of Mary with Children all the time while her father is working, thus proving she's with her father during the week. Girl, look, don't lie. That right there is telling us that you're lying. And Samantha is the one that has to show she's not lying. I mean, you can only see by how social media has turned on Samantha to see that her reputation was damaged by the lies that Megan created.
And there's another lie. There's another one that she's going to be able to prove as well that this article actually speaks about. Tikkin said, we all loved Megan when she started to date Harry. In time, though, when we learned that Megan was not exactly what we thought she was, the bloom came off the rose with a thud. Here you have a person who should have been on top of the world and instead she sowed seeds of destruction and harm onto her father, the royal family and her will chair bound sister. It is an unfortunate situation when a person is at odds with her own family. Here you have Megan at odds with the families on both sides. Harry's relationship, he added, this wasn't love on first date. It was a calculated psych op to land a prince. It was a calculated move for her to land this prince. Clear as day. So if you're plotting and planning to be within the realm of a prince, then you're plotting and planning a lot of things besides the plan to get the prince. You're planning and plotting things about destruction and lies that you're going to say about your own family as a part of your plan to get to the prince. Because you got to X out your family because they are going to destroy your cover. You have to say you don't have these siblings because saying you have them opens the door to you people talking to your siblings and you having to go, you know, yeah, what they're saying is what has happened. But if she denies that she doesn't have siblings and that she doesn't hardly know them and that she didn't grow up with them, then that just makes her truth and then their truth. But if she takes on the relationship of her half siblings, she's opening the door up to not her story being her own. So she has to get rid of them to protect her fantasy in her head. He also took more general aim at Megan's account of her life. So including the often told story of a letter that she has sent to Proctor and Gamble asking to change the language on an advert for dishwashing soap, Ivory Clear, which said women are fighting greasy pots and pans with Ivory Clear. Now, this is a person who participated in the class project on her father's recommendation, wrote a letter to a soap manufacturer. And to this day, to this day, Megan professes that she had a significant impact because the soap company neutralized its language in the ad. Now, this was in her Meghan and Harry Netflix series. She told this fit, saying that she herself had a hand in changing that advertisement. She said that she changed that commercial when she wrote that letter. Now, we all know the real story. Thomas Markle told me when I interviewed him. The truth was... She didn't hear back from Ivory Soap. She didn't hear back. What did her dad do? He got a friend of his that worked over at Nickelodeon. They did a special piece around Megan and the letter that she had wrote about this dishwashing soap. And the commercial was changed, but no one wrote to her thanking her and attributed the change to her. No one said, Megan, from Ivory Soap, thank you for your letter. Because of what you said, we're, go we're, we're very thankful. We're going to change the commercial. She doesn't have a letter from Ivory Soap people saying thank you. We've changed it because of your letter. She assumed it. Till this day, she assumes it. The fact is, a lot of people had the same thought that Megan had. A lot of people thought, what she was saying and what she wrote in that letter. And because of all the letters that they got, the pushback, they changed the commercial. It was never because of Megan and her letter. But she keeps the fantasy going that she was the reason why it happened. And that's not the truth, folks. Now, the unnecessary lies about all she blames and the harm she committed is the basis of opinion. And that's what it is, is her opinion of what she says to be her truth an opinion, not the truth. Just like her relationship with her siblings is her opinion now to protect the lies that she's telling. So people with antisocial personality disorder tend to purposely make others angry or upset 
and manipulate or treat others harshly or with cruel indifference. They lack remorse and do not regret their behavior. The phase is often used as a term of abuse. And I think this is where it gets really dangerous for Harry. I think Harry is in a position of his life right now. He does not even really realize the true psychological danger that he is in right now. He really is in a world of hurt because he is isolated from his family. He is in a foreign country with children that will never really know anything about his side of the family, his upbringing. His children are essentially going to be foreign to Harry's childhood and what his life was like. It will be completely different from what Harry knew growing up. And that has to be somewhat sad for Harry because, I mean, it's almost as if you're not even passing down your traditions or your relationship, your history, your culture, your children will never experience. I would think that this is a man who is in harm's way, psychologically in harm's way. I, I really, truly do feel that. Music